Hi there, this is Jennifer Carter with Newport This Week, and I am here today with Diane Sheehan. She is the supervisor of the arts at Newport Public Schools, and she, um, so that's art and music, but she teaches art. So we wanted to talk to her today a little bit about her distance learning experience. How are you, Diane? I am great. And Jen, thank you for having me today, because I think I have so much great information to share that maybe the public and the community doesn't really know about. So I'm hoping, hoping that this will be very insightful and informative and fun. Perfect. Okay, so I have a couple of questions for you um, to get us kind of started. I guess, first of all, how are you finding this distance learning thing? Is it, how has it been? Well, the one thing about it is it's definitely unique and it's definitely going to be memorable. And the one thing I look at is, is that the governor, from the governor, from the commissioner of education, they have all used one word over and over again, and it's creative. And if I were to mark down how many times creative has been used, let's use creativity in our graduation. Let's use creativity. Let's be creative with our grab and grow meals. Let's be creative with the community outreach. And so this is a perfect opportunity because creative is what art is all about. So that having that segue of creativity and being creative has given me an outlet to be able to explore everything that we're doing using the online learning and distance learning. What's your, has been, go ahead. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. What, what's your ultimate goal, would you say, with the distance learning? Like, what has been your goal to kind of keep things going? I think my major goal is, is art, to the students. That's simple and clear, art to the students, and to make it interactive, to make it fun, and for most students, with the feedback I get from them, is that art is the one thing that is their most important coping skill during this whole quarantine. And to me, that is the joy of teaching. So, I have to imagine that you're going to have to be pretty creative to make this work from a distance perspective. What are some of the things that you've done that are creative to keep the art education going through this distance learning time? Do you have some examples of some of the projects you guys have worked on? And Yes, and I'll, I'll pull up these samples for you. We're going to try a little experiment here. Awesome. It is a mind shift. The main thing, and it is also a challenge, is, is that students... I'm not sure what art supplies they have. So my two goals to getting art to them is getting them away from the computer, getting them away from the screen, and then using the things that they have around the house. So I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to share my screen with you. All right. And uh, I'll hit share. And this is all. And I don't know whether you can see all of it. I'm going to do present. And you let me know if you see the first slide. Yep, here. go back there. Yep, I see. Is okay. this? I'm looking at a bunch of slides with different. It looks like different teachers' names. What am I looking at here? So right now, this is just a portion of all the art Google classrooms that I have. So I don't have, like for example, any teacher that just has one classroom and they have all of their lessons and things there. That each one represents the classrooms that I have at Pell, which I have over 18 of them. And they have the different, uh, it's their art classroom that they go to. So mm -hmm. for me, this is like my dashboard or command center or part of it. So mm -hmm. for example, like Mrs. Brule in art, the kids would go from her class to my art Google classroom where they'll find all of their assignments. So for a student, a regular student, like for example, in a second grade class or a kindergarten class or a fourth grade class, they see a dashboard where it not only has their classroom, but they also have an art Google Classroom, a PE Google Classroom, a library Google Classroom, a STEM Google Classroom. So it's a lot for them to take. So this is just something that from the teacher side and the student side is, is a lot more than just saying, hey, I'm online with one classroom. Hmm. So, Very interesting. So, I, so I'm gonna move through the slides a little quickly so that you can see 
And uh, luckily for all the professional development that I've had, and this is worldwide, I have a couple organizations. One is the Art of Education. The other one's the National Art Education Association. And we have had webinars and been sharing ideas of different projects. So there was one that some teachers had done and I thought, you know what, this is perfect because it's called the Art Project Clothing Challenge. And what it is, is that you were to take your clothes, that, and everybody has clothes, I hope, all right? You're gonna take your clothes and make something out of it. And so I have students here, they've all given me permission to share their images, just so that mm -hmm. you know, from their parents. And uh, this here was, my first one I got was from Asher. And they also, ha I had asked them, send me where you're doing your artwork. So he, you can see here that he did this alligator. And I'll show you a couple others. And of course, we have our sports-minded ones, Landon, <laughs> Boston Bruins. And every art project has Boston Bruins stuff. And he's a youth hockey player. He's uh -huh. a grade one. He's amazing. And he's incorporated other family members. And here, Kelly, I mean, you'd think she was sitting there uh, or standing there. And then, um, then I put it out to the administration and the school committee. So I asked Superintendent Germain, I said to Colleen, um, can you do one? So she did a palm tree, which is over here on this side. And then this one here is from Louisa Boatwright, our school committee member. And you would think she's sitting right there, but look at her, her clothing project from hair, sunglasses. I mean, it's almost like a Home Alone cutout image. Funny. Uh, and then Dr. Flowers put everything together and she specifically explained to me that this was the knock it off t-shirt that the governor had asked about distancing themselves and quarantine. And um, this is Wes from fourth grade. So they were, they were really engaging. I like the maps. Uh, I yeah. see them with maps. So, yeah. So now here was another project. Uh, George uh, Siegel is, I mean, Greg Siegel is a photographer, and he did a series called The Daily Bread, where he took third world countries, and he asked families to take a picture of themselves with the things that they had, ate, had eaten for the last two weeks. So I thought, well, this, this was one that a lot of art teachers were sharing, and I modified it a little bit to pick 15 things that were important to them during online distance learning and quarantine. So these kids, the first quiz was name the 15 things, what are important, and what is it that you can do? And I, I did a whole video of photographing, how to photograph, how to include things, think of color scheme. And these are precious. I mean, yeah, everything very from- cute the books, the art supplies, we've got the mask here, the way they've done it. And um, I just got so many great ones here. And look, I have sisters <laughs> who are both in my classes. A lot of families came together and yeah. Owen put his together. And uh, look at the poses that they I, have. I love it. They're so creative. They really are creative. It's great. So. So this one was really exciting for me because every time I got another one, it was like better than the others. Uh, this is Owen in grade two. And his mom had emailed me and said, Diane, I'm going to tell you, we had so much fun running around the house, putting it together. But look at that shot. You know, Jay, you have competition for your, your I know all these kids are going to be like excellent photographers I gotta say for me it's it makes me happy to see the kids like I haven't seen the kids in so long I mean I see them around town a little bit here and there but I haven't uh, been out taking pictures at the school in so long I miss the kids and look at this and then a lot of them said can my brother and sister come in in there some people took um family pets I had one that they had their newborn baby in the midst of four of them uh, it was like really, really interesting. And, um, and then I had some military families. This is Selena that will be going back to Poland. And um, every time I send her something, uh, she's in kindergarten, she says, um, translating, that uh, she's crying now because she'll never get to see me again. 
oh. and it, it, it is bittersweet without question. So my next project that I'm going into, and this is the one the kids are working this week, is Andy Goldsworthy is a uh, artist sculpture and he does nature art. Mm. And so they just need to go outside, find any kind of environmental uh, items such as leaves and twigs. And once again, we all can find them somewhere. And they're creating pictures, faces, palm trees. And I just started getting some of the images in mm. and they have been really good too. So um, those are some of the projects and I just wanted to finish with this was with our community outreach. Uh, we, every year the fourth graders have a Rough Point Mansion visit, which I know Jen, you know very well because yeah. you come and take the most amazing pictures. And so what it is is that he, um, I said to uh, Dr. Greenberg, who is the museum director there, can we do a virtual tour? And so he put a tour together. 160 fourth graders were involved in the virtual tour to watch it was question and answers. And it was amazing. And so one thing, even though the kids can't visit Rough Point, they were able to walk the streets of Newport and see all the houses that Doris Duke as her philanthropic work. And we were able to get some great images and ideas of what these kids were doing. So uh, this, this was fantastic. And those are just some of the things that we're doing. Finally, I'm just gonna end with this. All the Pell staff had to come up with a photo that they're sending. They're very popular now with like the car parades and yes. everything. And hey, you know what? Put a picture of yourself. So I thought, hmm. Let me do something creative because that's part of my nature. So I made myself as Elsa with Anna and I have my little uh, bitty, uh, picture that ended up going in with the rest of the teachers. And the kids were all like, oh my gosh, this is great. So stay creative and be safe. So that's my little slide presentation right there. I think that I'm to black. So I'll exit that. All right, so I have a few more questions for you. Okay. Once we can see if we can get our screen back. There we are. There we go, yay. Yeah. Okay, so obviously there's some challenges and you express some of the challenges. You're having to come up with some very creative ways and th these are amazing. Like these are all things kids can do that they may not have any art supplies at home and it's definitely very creative. I definitely enjoyed seeing it. But what are some of the challenges that you're finding? Are you, are you having to work extra to make this happen? Like, what's your daily schedule like here? Well, you know me, I'm a really active person. So being able, having to sit at a screen for all of these hours, it has been really time consuming. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's been one of the, the, the biggest challenges is, being able to sit still. So I'm yeah. just as bad as the kids because when I look at Zoom meetings, they're hanging from their bunk beds. They've got, they've got things over their head. But when they do come, they, they're like, hey, look at my artwork. Look what I'm doing. But I've really been having the mantra that there's more joy than challenges. Mm -hmm. And taking that and turning the, the things that people are like, oh, this is the worst thing that happens. This has given me an opportunity, first of all, to the professional development learning curve has really skyrocketed, not only for teachers, but for students. But yeah. new words from Flipgrid to screen castomatic to uh, hyperdocs, it's been a it's been a great learning curve. Uh, and I I have embraced it because I it will only make it better for next year, when whatever situation when we have. So I'm, I'm really excited. Like I said, I'm going to take these challenges, especially the one that we're not sure if kids have art supplies, and I assume right. that they don't have any, that these challenges are turned into projects like I've had and have taken me on a level that I've never done before. Right. Uh, with that challenge, I've noticed that I'm, I'm now thinking for next year the three different avenues I can go into. I can reflect on the fact that there are 
things that I did online that I would have never done, like the clothing project and things because they're home. Mm -hmm. And then there's projects that I literally have to do at schools, such as the 900 ceramic projects that are still sitting on the shelves waiting for me. I will say that when I packed up my room, I made a little video talking to the kids and I just circled the room and I just said, your projects are safe. Uh, they're all packed up. They'll be waiting for you. I'll get them for you. And that I miss your presence here and just the aura of just being here. And I had so much student reaction coming back to me saying, oh, Mrs. Sheehan, I'm so glad they're safe. And I know we'll get them sometime. And if I have to send them to Okinawa, Japan, like Caroline is going to, I will mail them to her. <laughs> so I, I think it's, it's, been, it's been unique. And as I said before, if anything, it's going to be memorable. I mean, yeah. no other time will we ever have to experience this. Yeah. Well, we, we for sure hope things are going to get back to normal, but I think it sounds like there's a lot of things that you're going to take from this that are going to, you know, augment what you might do in the classroom anyway, that you kind of added some additional tools to your toolbox and the kids are too. So right. it's a new mindset. So mm -hmm. I, I think the last thing is just simply closure uh, and what's next. Yeah. And uh, the end of the year, there won't be the, the high fives and the, the hugs, because I'm a hugger and kids are huggers. <laughs> of all ages, kids are huggers. And um, it will just make next year that much more special when we do re reunite. Yeah. So that's, um, it, it's all good. It's yeah. all good. Uh, so I, I think this experience has been really unique, definitely, but at the same time, just really a shift into a good mindset and um making have art i always say it's at the top of the pyramid and everything <laughs> else trickles down because anything you touch see do feel has been affected by an artist and yep. there's no denying it and well, we're not specials <laughs> we're not specials we're often referred to specials we are essentials I think so. I agree. Being a photographer, obviously, I, I feel like, you know, art is definitely key. And I can see it in the classroom when I can, when I come into your classroom and I see the kids working, they are happy, they're engaged, and they're able to relax and let out some of what they're maybe holding in, you know, throughout their day. And there's a lot of careers in art. So it's definitely an amazing profession to be an art teacher. So thank you so, so much for joining me today. I really appreciate the interview. And it was great. It was so nice to see the kids and their projects. Thank you. Yes, and keep watching for stuff. And I'm gonna keep bugging you, Jen, to keep okay. taking pictures because you just do an awesome job. Thank, thank you. you so much. Okay.